and welcome to Creatively Rich. I am your host, Ann Tipton, here today with Stella Orange of StellaOrange.com. Hi, Stella. Hey, Ann. <laughs> so let's talk first a little bit about um, your business on its own. So we've had a conversation with the three beavers, um, which are your business partners, but then you run your own operation. So let's just talk for a minute about what you're doing over there and how that works. Okay. What do you want to know? Well, just give us, give us the rundown. You're, you're doing this awesome workshop, Write Your Way Home. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so um, I have, uh, at stillatorange.com, I run workshops. They're really called intro courses for something called Writing Your Way Home, which is basically using writing and looking at the stories of your life to just gain insights and to develop muscle for this thing called life. Uh, and so I take people on, it's a three week intro course. I take people on a handheld tour into my weird, wonderful world of what is a writing practice? What are the stories worth telling in your life? Can you tell those stories differently so that they please you, especially if it's something that you still have a negative emotional charge around? Um, and just some of the techniques that I've used over the years, um, writing to myself in a journal and then also as a creative commercial writer, as a copywriter. So, so that's writing your way home, the intro course. And then I'm also convening a writing group for people that have things to write. Because for many of us, it gets kind of lonely to be working on your writing by yourself. And it also can like slide to the bottom of your to-do list. So I run a writing group called The Regulars that meets on Wednesday afternoons on video conference. We show up, we mute everyone. Uh, so you can see everyone all across the country and around the world writing, but we're not interrupting your process. You bring whatever it is that you're looking to write, whether it's your journal, a piece for publication or performance, book, book proposal, uh, a letter. I've got a friend like, oh, I think I want to sign up to do thank you note writing. I want to write thank you notes, but I haven't slotted that in my day. Um, or any, you know, just writing. And so we do that together for about 60, 70 minutes. And then we stop and we have tea and cookies and talk about what we've been writing and just have a little bit of community, a little conviviality, because what wouldn't make Wednesday afternoons better but cookies? So you bring your cookies, I'll bring mine, and we can nibble on them together as we, uh, yes, while away the, the, the uh, minutes. So, so that's what I'm doing in, in Stella Orange. That sounds delightful. And I, I was once a part of your previous iteration of, of this writing thing. And I, I can honestly say that that was just incredibly helpful for me in terms of, you know, just carving out the space to do the thing that I was putting off. Personally hate copywriting. Like I'm okay at it, but I don't like doing it. And so having that like fixed space to do that was absolutely huge for me. Um, and also Stella, I don't know that I've told you this, but I think this is just kind of fun and something to share. You know, you would kind of introduce me to the artist's way, which is the, the morning pages, like the writing, um, just to like brain dump, get the stuff out of your head that's like the clutter up here so you can actually get stuff done, or at least that's my interpretation of, of that's right. that. But what I've started doing actually is opening up a Google Doc, um, and Google Doc has a talk to text function these days. Um, and so I am literally using my morning pages like a therapist. Like I am talking out my stuff. Uh, and, and like in a writing way though, like it feel, it has the same kind of feel as writing to me, but it, yep. it, it adds that, I don't know, whatever magic writing has, it has that magic still. And it's really been helpful to get a lot, a lot out very quickly. Um, so fun. Well, that's fun a great writing. technique. So I'm of the opinion that writing is not necessarily solitary. It's not something that has to be done on a computer or a piece of paper. Like I'm often writing when I'm walking the dog because I'm relaxed, I'm taking in information, I'm kind of letting my mind unspool. And we all have different processing styles. And so this is something, especially when it comes like writing for business, I've been doing that work for the last nine, going on 10 years, helping people write for their business and communicate effectively. And one of the techniques that I teach people who are natural verbalizers is exactly what you're talking about. Like let stream of consciousness from writing flow, but it doesn't mean you have to like hold up a utensil or a pen or a you know, crayon or a pencil in your hand or put your fingers on the keyboard, you can just speak. And so that was what you're talking about is something that we've been doing in my community for the last, I think, four years. And that was called Shut Up and Write. 
And that's actually what the regulars is, is it's just a standalone shut up and write group, but it's not necessarily about business. It's just for all of us that are looking for a place to take our writing and have a little bit of community as we do it. Because it's like a meditation practice or going to like, I don't know, like a yoga class or a Pilates class. Like there's something about being in community with other people that strengthens our individual practice. And so I didn't know that when I made, like I made that thing up. Like I was like, oh, like my clients were asking, like, can you sit with me and I write? And I was like, that's all you want me to do is just be with you while you're doing your writing. And they were like, yeah, just like, okay, yeah, let's do this thing. We'll call it shut up and write. And that became the magic. Like people loved that. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. Like many of us are yearning for more time to write our stuff in our lives. And we want to be in cahoots with other people that are doing it. And it's kind of this, like writing is kind of an anachronistic, sort of weird, odd activity. And we often don't see it done because it's so private. And so there's something really potent to actually show up to a place on the reg and like, like, ritualistically write together like and it's not collaborative or any of that it's like still a private activity but there's something that strengthens each one of our individual writing practices so that you kind of grease the gears and get it going and before long I don't know if this was your experience and but I've heard people do shut up and writes with me and then they can get in the zone whenever they need to write or they like get out of like I've worked with a lot of people that like hate writing or their mean old middle school English teacher told them they were crap at writing and they have to like get over that gremlin voice to do you know be effective at their jobs or communicate with other human beings in the world and like writing can be very healing for that like I teach techniques and tools like okay how do you talk to that nasty old crusty grumpy middle school English teacher who like wounded you Like, how do you heal that? How do you develop a scab around that and like shrink it so that you can get on with yourself? Because you still need to communicate as a human being and you need to use words. And so there's all sorts of things that you can do with your imagination that like like apply a balm to that stuff. So yeah, I like, and and I also have to say, because this is on my mind, I was writing copy to promote this this morning. Like people are like, oh, shut up and write is such a harsh term. Like people like, I want it to be softer. And I'm like, yeah, that's not what we're doing. Like, I, I firmly believe, and I've, I've been a teacher of commercial and, and marketing writing for the last nine years. I teach this stuff. I practice this stuff. I've written over a million dollars worth of sales copy at this point. I've made my clients over a million dollars collectively. And what I've learned is you don't get better necessarily by studying writing. You get better by doing writing and then talking about it. And that's not for the the faint of heart. Like it's like, there's a whole bunch of people out there and I'm sorry that I'm just being like bitchy about it, but I feel strongly about this. Like there's a whole bunch of people that would just rather fetch about like how hard it is for them or how it hurts to write or what someone said to them that they decided they were going to believe that person had more authority and like knows more than them. And they were going to internalize that and be like, Oh yeah, I do suck at writing. Or maybe it actually hurts to write. Right. Like I get that. I don't want to talk to people about that. Like, I actually want to just sit and be with people as they, like, have a catharsis, as they exercise the demons, whatever demons are there, whatever reluctances or gremlin voices or ghosts that are there that are keeping you from enjoying the process, that is interesting to me. But the only way that I want to talk to someone about that is if they actually show up, shut up, and do the writing Because then we can have an interesting conversation that's actually about the mechanics of moving past what's holding you back. But there's a whole bunch of people that are more attached to being held back than they are in actually having the life that they desire and that they crave. And like, those aren't my people. Like, that's really tedious to talk to those people because they're so attached and so invested to how they're the victim. So I'm like, yeah, we're not doing that. We're doing shut up and write. If you don't want to shut up and write, like, I don't, I, I can't be there for you because I want to be with people that actually do the work. End of soapbox. I love it. Well, and I think that's honestly, like, I'll I'll be completely transparent. I got a D in sixth grade English, okay? Yeah. (laughs) And that, like, like, did you carry that for a while? Uh, girl, I'm still carrying it. Like, yes! that's part of the reason that, like, that's why I need the Google Voice thing to, to get me through is because I don't have to worry about my grammar. I don't have to worry about my punctuation. I don't have to worry about my spelling. I can't spell to save my life. And I have right. great shame around that. 
But that doesn't mean that I can't be a, a good writer, right? Like, I don't have to be able to spell to be able to write well. <laughs> well, and I, I say this as a former classroom teacher. Like, I used to teach high school, and I taught middle school for a time. And, like, like part of my frustration with the public school system, and, not, you know, I, I taught in the United States and in Asia, like, is that we penalize people for making mistakes. And I was like, no, like, the mistakes are actually where the interesting things are. And, like, you may never be a good speller, but it doesn't mean that that exempts you from being an extraordinary communicator or someone who has something to say. And so I think somewhere along the development of, of you know, standardized institutional education, we've lost track of like, we're just human beings here having a human experience, like trying our best to express what it's like inside this meat suit and like connect with other people having another experience so that we can like commune with one another and maybe solve some problems while we're at it. And so it's like, you don't, there's so much trauma that so many people have around writing or just saying what's going on inside you. And like, I'm not okay with that. You're a writer, Anne. You just process it and you've now thrown your arms around like, this is my process. I need to verbalize the words. That works for me. And what works for you might be different than work, what works from, you know, John Doe, Jane Doe down the street. Cool. Like, that's awesome. I'll show up for that. Like, so for many of us, we've been holding these like wounds for so long and we think we're doing it wrong. I'm like, no, what if you've been doing it right? Like, uh, I, apparently I need to rant today. Thank you for giving me a platform to do so. May it be entertaining for all those tuning in. For the longest time, people like poo-poo procrast, I love that. They poo-poo procrastination. Like people are like, oh, I procrastinate. I need to be more productive. And I'm like, what, what? No, you're not a machine. You're a human being. Like chill the F out, slow the F down and just enjoy, enjoy this. And what if, like, what if your procrastination is actually part of your creative process? And people always get their feathers rustled when I talk about this. But like, I remember I used to have that mindset as well, where I was like, oh, I'm such a procrastinator. And I was like, that's basically being abusive to myself. And I'll just speak for me. Like, maybe you are a hideous, horrid procrastinator, and it's just gutted all your, your hopes and dreams in life. Like, okay, get, get a psychiatrist. <laughs> But for me, it was like, I'm actually at war with myself when I say that I am procrastinating. And instead, what if I look at it through the frame of, this is part of my creative process. Like if you've ever watched, I don't know if Gizmo does this, but like if you've ever watched a dog before they lay down, like they circle around a couple times before they lay in their dog bed or they curl up in your lap. I like that with tasks. Like I actually need, like my procrastination for like, I'll submit for our con collective consideration. What if our procrastination is just like a dog walking around in his or her bed before it lays down? Like what if there is a, what my husband calls in the boudoir, an initiation sequence, <laughs> which I'm here to say there is right. Like that is real. Like why, why make that wrong? Like, why do we make ourselves wrong? And the more interesting question is, what if there's nothing wrong with us and it's just our process? And then you can write your morning pages by showing up in Google Docs and actually speaking what you need to speak instead of sitting down to a journal and writing it. And that's just how you operate. That's how your system works. And so that is a fascinating conversation because we're all built slightly differently. And that's what I love is when we start to have this conversation about, well, here's what works for me. And then this still doesn't work for me. Well, what have you tried? And what have you tried? And there's this beautiful cross-pollination of ideas where we all get our needs met, but maybe in a slightly different way. But it's, yeah, like we need more of that conversation in the world. And I just happen to show up to do that around writing and like making up stories. But the cool thing is, is like when we do that in the controlled world, of imagination and make-believe and just messing around and having it be sloppy, it tends to like seep out in the rest of our lives. And it starts to show up in our careers and our relationships and our conversation with random people and strangers at the grocery store. And like, that's the riot. Like that is the revolution. I think that's a perfect place to end the interview, Stella. <laughs> that is the revolution 
Mic drop. There we go. <laughs> so if you want to learn more about Stella, go visit StellaOrange.com. Um, she can inform you with her beautiful way of, of expressing words on page exactly what she's about over there. Um, thank you so much, Stella, for being on the show. Thank you, man.